One of the biggest stumbling blocks that people have on this journey with the Law of Assumption is the inconsistencies of manifestation. And this is a question that I hear about all the time. Every week somebody will say, Missy, why does it seem like this works for some things but not for others? Why is it when I test the law that some of the things show up and other things don't? Needless to say, this is an area of struggle for many, and ultimately one of the reasons why it can feel very difficult for us to have and maintain the faith in the law, which for many of you, if you know, faith is an integral part of the Law of Assumption and one that is going to benefit greatly on this journey. So if you want to know more about inconsistent manifestation, why this happens, and ultimately how to fix that, this video is for you. What's up you guys? I am Missy Renee and on this channel we talk all things manifestation and conscious creation and how to create the best life possible for you. If this is a topic you are interested in learning more about, don't forget to subscribe and if you enjoy this content, don't forget to like the video. If you're interested in any of my resources, such as my brand new Manifest Your Specific Person Masterclass, I've got all that information down below in the description box, so don't forget to check it out. So if you're here watching this video, there's a pretty good chance that you at least have some belief in the Law of Assumption. There's at least some degree of trust in manifestation, otherwise you probably wouldn't be here. That said, when it comes to holding and maintaining faith, that our imagination creates our reality, this is a tricky thing for us to really fully get behind. And the reason for that is because it seems like on this journey we have a very difficult time seeing consistent results. One of the first things that we're taught to do when we find out about manifestation is to put this to the test. We want to begin to build our faith and trust in the law by proving to ourselves that manifestation is in fact real. But the problem becomes when we go about trying to test the law, perhaps some things will manifest, but then other things don't. And then we start to get very puzzled by this, like, okay, why is this sometimes working and not working? How can we call this a law if I am not seeing consistent results? When it comes to the law of gravity, that shit works and I could prove it every time. So why, with the law of assumption, can we not see the same kind of consistent results? Well, the reason for that is simple, and it comes down to our own double-mindedness. It is our own lack of faith that makes it so this practice is inconsistent. And I know you're probably already saying, but wait a minute, how am I supposed to believe in something if I don't see proof of it? Well, that is not how the law of assumption works. It is not that we see the proof of it before we believe it. And hey, don't get mad, I didn't make the rules. But in all seriousness, the reason that we are seeing inconsistent results, if this is what your experience has been, it is because of the double-mindedness that you have. And for anybody who may not know, double-mindedness is essentially being back and forth with our beliefs and our intentions. So if I am in one moment feeling secure and confident and certain that something's gonna happen, I know it's done, I can feel it, and then a few moments later I am struggling, perhaps reacting to something, letting myself get overrun by fearful thoughts, that is double-minded. That is going back and forth between two different states of consciousness. And the more that I do this, the less that I am going to see the desired results. And I think the best way to try to break this down and give you the best example possible that I can give is to give you some backsight into my story and something that I experienced because like most of you, I certainly struggled with this too. When I was new on my journey, and when I was still building the faith in the law, learning to test this, learning what I was doing, all of that, I certainly had this same issue. For those who may not be aware, when I first found the Law of Assumption, the very first thing that I set out to do was to put this to the test. I didn't immediately try to jump in and manifest something significant because what I was reading from Neville, and at the time it was only Neville Goddard who was talking about the Law of Assumption, this was well before the YouTube explosion of coaches, the point that Neville kept referring back to in many of his lectures was to put this to the test. 
He would say repeatedly not to take his word for any of this and that we needed to build our own trust and faith in the law. And the only way we could do that is through experience and by putting it to the test. And like most people, I started small. I wanted to just try to see if I could imagine a few things and what would happen. I started with a few small insignificant things just to see what would happen. I would imagine it, I would take note of it, and then I would drop it. And as I began to see more and more proof of the things that I imagined coming to pass, naturally my faith began to grow and grow. And this went on for a couple of months until I felt pretty confident in my abilities with the law. But I do remember going back over the lists and the notes that I made and the things that I had intended to manifest, and there were a few things that even a few months later never came to pass. And specifically, I noted there were three things that had not come to pass on the list that I had wrote. Now, granted, most of the things that I had intended, that I had listed, did manifest, but three things had not. I wanted to obtain a new vehicle that I didn't have to pay for. I wanted an all expenses paid, stay in a penthouse, and I wanted to see somebody get rickrolled. Now, I know that these things were a bit bigger, perhaps, but nonetheless, I had already at this point, several months in of testing the law, I had already grown a considerable amount of faith because I had seen so many things happen. But the fact that there were still things from months prior that had not manifested yet really started to bug me. This really bothered me. I was like, why is it that I have no attachment to these objects and these incidents? I didn't care whether or not they happened. So why were some showing up and others not? And what I noticed is that the more that I would start to become aware of this and the more that it started to eat at me, the more inconsistent my manifestations became. More and more I would start to notice that things wouldn't happen. I wasn't seeing as many things come to pass as I had been before. And to be honest, this was really frustrating. And I started to be like, okay, what the hell? Am I doing something wrong here? Did I miss up somewhere? Am I missing something? I was poring over Neville's lectures and his books, trying to see if something was overlooked until I found Neville's lecture about the Pearl of Great Price. Now, for those who have not read Neville's lecture, The Pearl of Great Price, or for those who may not have heard of that before, I will leave the link down to the lecture below, along with the link to the video that I made talking about The Pearl of Great Price. You can check it out up here if you are not familiar. But basically what it boils down to and what Neville's point was in that lecture was that we need to sell everything and go all in when it comes to the law, if we want to see success every time. Neville did not mince anything when he said that if we are inconsistent with our belief, and if we are tepidly going back and forth, then our results are going to be inconsistent as well. He stated in no uncertain terms that if we wanted to see consistent results and consistent success with the law, that we need to sell all of our old beliefs, all of our old limitations, all of our old doubts, and go all in with the belief that what we imagine becomes our reality. You cannot be both. According to Neville, we cannot both have doubts in the law and also see consistent results. And this really put me in the crossroads. I realized after this lecture that I needed to make a choice. I knew that my faith and trust in the law was not solidified, at least not completely. And I then learned through that lecture that the reason why my results were so inconsistent was due to that lack of trust. So I had two choices, either go all in with the law and trust that what we imagine creates our reality no matter what, even if not everything I had imagined came to pass. Even if I did not have proof, I needed to go all in. Or the other option that I had was to walk away from this entirely, was to say, you know what, because I have not seen consistent results with the law, it doesn't work. And I needed to wash my hands of this and walk away. So I was really at a fork in the road here when it came to what to do. I either needed to go all in and buy that pearl, as Neville said, or I needed to walk away from this entirely. 
chalk it up to coincidence and say, you know what, because I didn't see everything that I intended to manifest because it didn't, it doesn't work. And I gave myself a couple days to really decide and truly decide what to do. And as all of you can see, I decided to go all in and buy the pearl. I decided to get behind this 100%. Physical 3D changes or not, proof or not, I decided to go all in. And I kid you not, within that week, that same week that I made the conscious, deliberate decision to go all in and buy that pearl, those things that had not manifested in several months that I had no idea where it was, those initial things that had not manifested, all of them manifested that same week. After months and months of putting the law to the test and not seeing movement in these areas with these things, I received the car, totally paid for. I had that stay at the penthouse, also totally paid for. And on set that day, as we were shooting a commercial, the director got rickrolled. So the point that I am trying to make with this video, and by telling you the story, is that we must at some point or another, if we want to see consistent results with the law, if we want to know indefinitely that we are in fact the operant power, we must, we must buy that pearl. We cannot be double-minded and expect consistent results. And for me personally, the fact that I gave myself that decision to either go all in or walk away did in fact make it easier to go all in. I wasn't trying to put a gun to my head and make myself believe something that I didn't believe. I had the choice to scrap this all entirely. But when I chose, when I deliberately made the decision and the choice to go fully in, buy that pearl of great price, the things that I had been waiting to see, the things that had not shown up yet, they all showed up in that same exact week. So the point of this video is to stress the importance of going all in. Because the truth is, whether we believe in the law or not, does not make it any less real. And we can see this through looking at our own lives and how things in our life has transpired, the events and circumstances we've experienced. I mean, there's all different kinds of ways that we can really just begin to see, if we really pay attention, how our imagination has shaped our reality, how our beliefs and assumptions have shaped the experiences that we've had. We can see it if we are paying attention. So dare yourself to be bold, dare yourself to completely go in, because remember, ultimately, we cannot serve two masters. You either believe this or you don't. It cannot be somewhere in the middle. There is no gray area when it comes to buying the pearl. You're either all in and sell off all your old beliefs, or you don't. And that's fine if you don't, but we cannot expect consistency with our results and consistency with our desires and manifesting consciously if we're still holding on to those old beliefs of limitation and to those old limiting beliefs. So going forward, dare to be bold. Dare yourself to buy that pearl. Boldly go all in and assume yourself to be the person that you wanna be, who has the things that you desire. Get familiar and occupy that state of consciousness. Burn those old bridges and completely abandon yourself to the person that you want to be because you will not go far with double-mindedness. You might see some successes, but if you are going back and forth, it is only going to be inconsistent. So dare to assume and dare to be bold. Because once you do this, once you burn the bridges to your old self, once you completely abandon yourself to the person you desire to be, once you buy that pearl and don't look back, you will radically and completely change everything in your life. And that radical change on the inside will result in a radical transformation on the outside. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope it gave clarity and inspiration to you all. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. 
And if you're interested in checking out any of my other resources, I will leave links down below to my workshops and programs, my blog, my podcast, my social channels, all that good stuff. I got a ton of resources in that description box, so don't forget to check it out. Also, don't forget to check out the other videos on this channel. Don't forget to check out my Manifestation Fundamentals playlist. Each video is a different topic, but it all pertains in how to manifest the best life ever. So until we meet again, you guys, as always, take care, be well, and never forget, buy that pearl. Just buy it. It won't bite, I promise. <laughs> Happy manifesting, guys.